In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. In today's gospel, Jesus contrasts the prayer of the proud Pharisee with that of the humble tax collector. So we prepare ourselves to celebrate this liturgy by humbly opening our hearts to God's mercy. Lord Jesus, you exalt the humble. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you are exalted at the right hand of the Father. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you exalt those who are honest in prayer. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father. Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father, amen. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living and ever-loving God, increase our faith, hope, and charity, and make us love what you command, so that we may merit what you promise. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Sirach. The Lord is a God of justice, who knows no favorites. Though not unduly partial toward the weak, yet he hears the cry of the oppressed. The Lord is not deaf to the wail of the orphan, nor to the widow when she pours out her complaint. The one who serves God willingly is heard, his petition reaches the heavens. The prayer of the lowly pierces the clouds. It does not rest till it reaches its goal, nor will it withdraw till the Most High responds, judges justly, and affirms the right, and the Lord will not delay. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. from the second letter of St. Paul to Timothy. Beloved, I am already being poured out like a libation, and the time of my departure is at hand. I have competed well. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. From now on, the crown of righteousness awaits me, which the Lord the judge, judge will award to me on that day, and not only to me, but to all who have longed for his appearance. At my first defense, no one appeared on my behalf, but everyone deserted me. May it not be held against them. 
but the Lord stood by me and gave me strength so that through me the proclamation might be completed and all the Gentiles might hear and I was rescued from the lion's mouth. The Lord will rescue me from every evil threat and will bring me safe to his heavenly kingdom. To him be glory forever and ever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, o Lord. Jesus addressed this parable to those who were convinced of their own righteousness and despised everyone else. Two people went up to the temple area to pray. One was a Pharisee and the other was a tax collector. <clears throat> the Pharisee took up his position and spoke this prayer to himself. O oh God, I thank you that I am not like the rest of humanity, greedy, dishonest, adulterous, or even like this tax collector. I fast twice a week and I pay tithes on my whole income. But the tax collector stood off at a distance and would not even raise his eyes to heaven but beat his breast and prayed, O oh God, be merciful to me, a sinner. I tell you, the latter went home justified, not the former. For whoever exalts himself will be humbled, and the one who humbles himself will be exalted. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. In the parable, we have two Jews, one who was the Pharisee, what we would probably call today the religious right, the righteous ones. He was someone who was very self-righteous. He had a sense of superiority. He despised everybody else who wasn't like him, despising people. And then we have the other Jew, the tax collector. Now the tax collectors were most despised and especially this one because of the Jew because the Jews believed that God is their king and that their taxes should go to support the temple and not the Roman government. So the Jewish tax collector, tax collector of which we heard about in today's gospel, he was doubly despised, not only because he was a tax collector but also because tax collectors were known to be very dishonest. They took the taxes and then they even took more than what they were supposed to be taken. But Jesus today holds up the sinner as the example because of the attitude of these two Jews. That Pharisee who did everything according to the law, did everything perfectly, yet in his heart he never at all reflected the love of God because he despised others, he hated others. And then the tax collector, he comes before the Lord and he knows about his own unworthiness. And he gives us a very beautiful prayer. Oh God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Very simple. You know, sometimes if you go to confession and have a hard time remembering the act of contrition, those few words there, perfect act of contrition. O oh God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Because that's the person who comes humbly before God, realizes they're not perfect, but that they want to become perfect. So, uh, the author Anne Lamott had this quote to say about, about those who are like this Pharisee. 
the one who is self-righteous and have, have their, you know, their hatred for others. She said, you can safely assume that you've created God in your own image when it turns out that God hates all the same people that you do. Think about that. When you believe that God hates the same people that you do, you've made God into your own image. The tax collector didn't have that image. He came humbly before God as he was. And God holds him as the example because he let his heart be open up to the Lord. Oh God, be merciful to me, a sinner. When Pope Francis, early on in his pontificate, was asked, who is Jose, uh, uh, Jose Bergoglio, or Jorge Bergoglio? And he, he followed through with the very simple phrase, I am a sinner. Not self-righteous always showing our need for the love and mercy of God. May we have then, in our own hearts, the disposition, not of the religious right, the know-it-alls, the self-righteous, but the one of the sinner who was open to the Lord and whom God himself exalted. Together we profess our faith using the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived of the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Let us now humbly stand before our God and pray for our needs. That all members of the church be honest about themselves before God and be authentic in their prayer. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all peoples of the world come to salvation by being in right relationship with God and each other. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the proud be humbled and the humbled be exalted. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That each of us admit our sinfulness and in prayer beg for God's mercy. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Merciful God, you hear the cry of those who humble themselves before your majesty. Hear these our prayers, that one day we might be exalted with you forever. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
pray, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Look, we pray, O Lord, on the offerings we make to your majesty, that whatever is done by us in your service may be directed above all to your glory, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We give them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For although you have no need of our praise, yet even our thanksgiving is itself your gift, since our praises add nothing to your greatness, but profit us for salvation through Christ our Lord. And so in company with the choirs of angels and saints, we praise you, and with joy we proclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Joseph, our Bishop, all the clergy, and all your people. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Joseph, her loving husband, with the blessed apostles, the martyrs, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At 
the Savior's command informed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. <clears throat> Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. May your sacraments, O Lord, we pray, perfect in us what lies within them, 
that what we now celebrate in signs we may one day possess in truth through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May our loving God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Amen. Thanks be to God. Sing to the mountain, sing to the sea. Today, uh, I'm certainly sure you appreciate the celebration of Mass and how much it means to you and means to so many in the community to be the heart of a worshiping community, to give praise to Christ. And so I ask you, uh, in your goodness, to continue your support and generous support of our television ministry here in the Diocese of Las Vegas. And may God bless you for your generosity.